Hey everyone, welcome to The Huddle. We just finished our fourth quarter and released earnings, and I'm here with Tom Ward to talk about the quarter. But first, to, to all the Walmart Associates, congratulations for running the biggest quarter we've ever had. 105 billion in sales, really impressive what you have all done. And I just wanna say thanks for everything. You know, this quarter, Tom, um, it's a really interesting one. It's the really the eighth quarter since the pandemic began, and there's been such a big shift between people stocking up and then getting back into stores and then buying in e-commerce. And over the two years, we've grown over 70%, which is has been really impressive. But, you know, first, you're new to the role. We've been with the company now, what, 15 years or so. I'd like to talk about um, what you're doing here, but I also want to start by talking about where you started your career. I know it's a great story and you're from uh, a small town just east of here. I'd love to, uh, to talk about that for a second, then get back to the business. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thanks, John. And uh, look, you can tell I, uh, I didn't grow up too close to Northwest Arkansas. A little east. Uh, yeah, a little east, yeah. So we're uh, way east, in fact, over in the, in the UK. And um, to your point, I've been kind of in and around retail forever. So just past 15 years here at Walmart, um, but really grew up around this business. Um, you know, I, my, I used to actually help my dad. He had a series of convenience stores. I thought I was helping. I don't know whether he'd still agree, but um, worked in supermarkets growing up. And then when I graduated college, I joined uh, ASDA um, as, a, as an intern, as a graduate. And it just, I got bitten by the bug, John. You know, I worked in stores. I still distinctly remember sitting at a stoplight, excited to go in and check our numbers to see how we'd done the previous day. You can see them on your phone at that point. Um, and I've just been in love with it ever since. You know, I still think our store manager is one of the coolest roles we've got in our business. Um, and then I got the chance to see the world with Walmart International and see how consistent our customers' problems are around the world. They want us to save them money. They need us to save them time. And then I've had this awesome ride on the U.S. side, John. Yeah, so you came over for, what, a six-month temporary assignment. How long ago was that? Yeah, I'm, I'm now about 10 years into a six-month assignment. Yeah, Perfect. So. How did you start your career? What was your first real job after retail, college? Because you, uh, you weren't from college straight in full-time. Uh -huh. You did some other things first. Yeah, no, I uh, I studied geography bizarrely in the college, uh, John, um, and I've I've got all these kind of things that were interesting but not that helpful in retail. And so when I joined, I went straight in as a as a department manager, and I kind of worked my way around the store. I did most of those departments, whether it was learning the the freezers, the coolers, uh, the general merchandise areas of the store. Eventually became a store manager, and then I got the chance to work in a in our kind of support function, the home office before moving to the U.S. So let's talk about um, the uh, the associates in the quarter. So we had great performances in fulfillment center, stores, distribution center, you know, really unprecedented, unprecedented supply chain challenges, and the team overcame it. So what are you most excited about as we look at ahead into this quarter and looking forward about what all is possible given what we just accomplished? You know, I think I go back to where you started, John. It's huge congratulations to the teams. You know, what's amazing about this business is the reason we win is because we win together. You know, we've got this end-to-end -end team that Chris Nicholas is leading now from source all the way through to refrigerator, and it involves all of us. And so I'm excited about removing more friction and connecting more of those points so that we can bring that convenience to more customers. And I think we're just getting started in this space, John. Yeah, I do too. I do too. And, and something you said is important, connection. Um, the stores you know, play such an interesting role in not only in, in society, but in commerce today. I think it was like five or six years ago, people were talking, talking about there may not be as many stores in the future or something was going to change in retail. And now what you see is the stores are the center of commerce. We have 4,700-ish you know, locations that are, are out all over the country with inventory forward deployed. But the role of the store managers changed. You, know, you were a store manager in the UK. I was a store manager in super centers and Division One stores in the US. And we were focused on, really, at that time, one thing. It was the in-store shopper. But it's so much different now. Why don't you talk about that? Yeah, it's, it's transformed. I think actually the role that you, you mentioned, the store manager, is, is still going to be one of the most exciting positions we've got in our company. Um, and just think about the way customers shop now. You know, they, they need us to save them time and they expect us to save them money and they trust us for that, John. But the way that those two things come to life is transforming. You know, we've been through an incredible couple of years and the team have done an amazing job of connecting those dots. But convenience continues to be top of our customers' minds. And so once the customer that we served was the one that walked through the front door, well, now they might walk through the front door, they might work through our digital front door, you know, through our app. Mm -hmm. They might start the journey on the website. 
One week they might expect to get a really convenient curbside pickup because they're on the way to a kid's sporting event or on the way to work. The same customer a different day might need a delivery or an express delivery in a hurry. You know, and increasingly, they might let us into their home to keep their refrigerator and their cupboards in stock. And all those processes come back to the connection between our supply chain, our stores, and our e-commerce capabilities. You know, customers are, are so busy. Some of the points you made are, are really interesting. I remember a time when we would talk about types of customers and this customer behaves this way, this customer behaves this way. But really what you see is people behave based on what's going on in their life that day, that hour, that minute, whatever they've been inspired by, whether it was something in their social media feed or it's a planned purchase for dinner while they were sitting at that sporting event. And so the stores have such a big role to play because, you know, in a lot of cases, you may be an in-store customer, also hit the pickup counter on the way home and then get home and have a delivery that's come from either a store or fulfillment center, the last mile network, which leads to really the last thing I want to talk about is your last role with last mile. You know, we're literally doing millions of deliveries every week. It's scaling quickly. The stores are assets, the fulfillment centers are assets, and the ability to use all those interchangeably has, has become something that's been more and more important to the company. So talk a bit about Last Mile, what all you've been doing, and, and maybe some of the experiments we're running. Yeah, no, I, I give a huge shout out to that Last Mile team, John, because they've done some incredible work. And when I think about Last Mile, what I think about is connection again. You know, this is around your point, you made it really well, which is we are so well positioned to win in this company. We have these fulfillment centers across the US, and then we have 4,700 stores that, that can function as fulfillment centers. And what we need to do is use the front end, the digital doorway, and connect those pieces really well. And one of the critical pieces of that connection is the last mile. You know, that's where the action happens when a customer chooses to stay at home, when they don't have the time that day or that week to come and shop our stores or go curbside. You know, they expect us to bring those items to their front door or their refrigerator. And we've got a lot of convenience and excitement going on in the last mile. You know, we're using our stores as fulfillment centers, John. Customers are going online, they're buying an item, and then our personal shoppers that we've built this incredible team over the years are picking those items in our stores, they're packing them in our new Walmart Plus mailer bags, and a few hours later, our customers are seeing that item on their doorsteps. Just amazing speed and convenience. And then when you think about speed and convenience, you know, the drone work's really exciting. So imagine waking up in the morning and realizing that you're out of cereal. And as the kids are getting ready, you can place an order for that cereal. And then you can see that cereal land in the front yard or in the backyard via a drone a few minutes later. This isn't science fiction, John. This is actually happening right now to our customers. In fact, I got an order myself not so long ago. Yeah, yeah, I was uh, hoping you were saying via drone because the cereal can't actually fly. It's the drone that That's true. Flies. Yeah, yeah, it needs the help. Good point. Good point. It's exciting, though, and, and things have, have certainly changed and, and come a long way. And one of the things that we say is most constant here is change, and it will continue to change. And the reason for the change, it's not because any of us wake up every day and say, we should just change things. It's because the customer changes. Yeah. You know, customers change all the time, and they change as they have new ideas or they experience new things that were better than what they had before. And uh, we, we talk about that a lot. I mean, once the customers had something better, they tend to stay with it. So we've got to be the, the place where we can offer customers what's the latest and the greatest that's out there and always be willing to change what we do and in some cases disrupt what we do. Even if it's successful, it's important that we stay ahead of where the customer's going. Yeah, John, you, know, you taught me two really valuable lessons. Loyalty in retail is the absence of something better and to fall in love with the problem and not the solution. And if you keep hold of those two things and you drive the energy in the teams and the connections across our, our organization, we can come up with some amazing solutions. So drones are cool, but the reason they're cool is because they solve a customer's problem, which is speed and convenience. Yeah, it's not about the delivery mechanism. It's, it's what kind of insight problem does the customer have and then having a plan to be able to address it so that their problem goes away and do it without friction. Tom, thanks for so much. Um, looking forward to having you in the role and everything you're going to accomplish and to the entire team again. Just congratulations on, on an amazing quarter. Uh, we've been through a lot. We've been through a lot together, but I really appreciate the way you're taking care of each other. And every time I'm out, which is, it feels like all the time lately, um, but every week I see stores all over the country. I've been in New York and, and Seattle and Southern California, Florida, all sorts of places in between just the last few weeks. And what I see is just a great team of people all working together. We wake up every day trying to get better and, and I really appreciate it. Thanks for everything.